Charging started. Hi, my name is Carlos. This is my Ionic 5 all-wheel drive SE model, and I've owned this for almost a year now. Bought it used at CarMax, and today I'm going to share some tips and tricks for new owners and for um, you know current users. Hopefully, you learned something new. And with that said, let's get the video started. All right, first things first, let's get this out of the way. We are not getting any type of update for wireless CarPlay or Android Auto. I know there's a lot of articles and people keep asking in the forums, hey, when's the update, when's the update? We're not getting it. <laughs> Our cars are under a different software or different system, I believe. And the only people getting that update, I believe, are the Kona EV owners and I believe the um, Hyundai Ionic 5N owners, uh, future owners, I should say. But yes, we are not getting that update at all, so that's number one. <laughs> All right, tip number two, this is more or less for the newer owners. Uh, there's no way to auto lock your car. However, it will auto lock if you don't open the door. So I'm going towards the door. It's gonna unlock. I'm not gonna open it. And then give it a second here. It auto locks. Um, so that's the only time it's going to auto lock. It's never gonna auto lock um, any other time. <laughs> and there are no updates or software updates coming out for that. So that's just something you kind of have to deal with. Either lock it with your key fob or lock it using the app. But it's never gonna auto lock unless you don't open the door, um, which makes sense to me, but some people are kind of upset about that. All right, and again, this is gonna be for uh, more or less the new owners. There's gonna be a little light here. Uh, you can't see it now because it's not on, but this little bubble lights up orange. That is completely normal, do not panic. That just means it's recharging the 12 volt battery that's underneath your hood. And that just, it just happens um, often. Sometimes it doesn't happen at all. But if there's an orange light, don't panic. It's not an ICCU problem or anything like that. Um, it's just a normal thing that happens and it's a good thing that it happens. So uh, don't panic. All right, let's talk about preconditioning. So this is just a PSA for all the new owners. You do not have to precondition your battery for level one and level two charging. So when you charge at home or if you go to a mall, sometimes they have like those little chargers. Um, you don't need a precondition the battery that's not a thing it's never going to do that um, so just make sure you don't worry or stress about that the only time you're gonna have to precondition is if you're going to a fast charger that's the only time you need it so don't stress about it any more than that so here's your next tip if you've never preconditioned a car there are two factors you need to take account of number one the battery actually needs to be above 20 percent if it's below 20 percent it will not precondition if it's preconditioning at let's say 20 20 percent exactly and then you reach 19 percent on the way there it will stop preconditioning the second thing is you have to choose a fast charger from the onboard navigation um, so you go ahead and select it you click on route and then it will go ahead and start preconditioning or maybe on the way there it will start preconditioning so make sure it's above 20 percent make sure you use the onboard navigation to go ahead and start your route so the car knows how far you are and will start preconditioning when it needs to all right, this next tip, you're gonna have to stay with me. So you have two buttons, right? You, you have map and you have navigation. You might say, well, you know, they sound exactly the same. What's the difference? With navigation, um, you can go ahead and click on EV chargers and you can actually filter uh, which type of charging you wanna look for anytime you go to navigation. So right now I have anything above 150 and then all the different charging uh, stations. So this is a preset filter that I put up and it will always show me that filter. However, if I use maps, it will not use that filter. It's gonna show me every single charging station around me, but it's not using the filter I set up in navigation. So keep that in mind. If you save a specific filter in navigation, you always have to come to navigation to use it. Map is just gonna show you everything around you. All right, let's talk about fast charging real quick. When you first do it for the first time, it's gonna be a little bit strange because the car is gonna make some noises and that's gonna be a mixture of um, the charger adding a lot of energy at once, um, a lot of electricity at once, and your car trying to cool down as well. Um, so it's like a balance of both things, but you're gonna hear really strange noises even sometimes, and not all the time, but sometimes you'll hear it like ramp up, like it's about to explode, it'll be like <laughs> But don't panic, that's all normal. Sometimes you might hear like bubbly noises or coily noises. Um, all the noises are fine, don't panic, it's totally normal. Sometimes they'll do it, sometimes they won't. Um, but that's, that's another tip for new owners. Don't panic if it makes noises. All right, next thing on the list are software updates. Now, Ionic 5 does not do any 
real over the air updates. It does GPS slash, you know, user interface updates via over the air, but any major updates, for example, the ICCU or the brake tail lights or anything like that, you're going to have to go to a dealership for. However, the smaller updates, again, like the GPS, um, you can get over the air. Now, I have not noticed a pattern from when these updates happen. So let's say an uh, update was recently announced, right? I don't know how long it's going to take for the over the air update to just show up. There isn't like a refresh page or anything like that on these vehicles. Um, however, what you can do is use a USB stick, go to your computer, download the update and then you can just plug it in there and you can download the update yourself and it's a lot quicker and here's a side tip for Mac users if you are using a Mac and for some reason it's not downloading the software you do have to turn off private relay and then it will download all right let's talk about this pink liquid and this blue liquid so this blue liquid is going to be a low conductivity coolant this is for the main battery and you cannot mess with this do not top it off if it's low take it to a dealership but do not mess with this because they would have to drain it first, flush out the entire system out of all the dirty coolant, and then they're gonna have to top it off from there. So that's something we can't do ourselves. You do have to take it to a dealership. However, this pink coolant is actually for the AC. And from what I've been reading, from what I understand, you can actually just top it off yourself. That's like normal AC coolant that you can buy at like the auto shop. Um, so from my understanding, you can top that off. But for this one, do not touch, <laughs> just bring it straight to the dealership. All right, let's say you wanna to go to the drive-in movies and this light's bothering you, or let's say you're putting something in the trunk and you can't close the door and your car is gonna keep telling you, hey, your trunk is open. What I found out is that you can actually just finger this as I fail miserably. Okay, there we go. There we go, look, okay. There we go, so I've locked it in place. Now the lights are gone and you can't really see from here, but the um, system in the car does not detect the trunk anymore. It thinks it's closed because we locked it. So keep in mind, because we locked it, you cannot close it. But once you're done doing whatever you're doing in the back, I don't judge, you just click on this little button here and it's gonna unlock it. And there you go. And now the light turns back on and the car is like, hey, your trunk is open again. So now let's talk about range. I'm at about 73% and I'm getting about 221 miles. Some people call the range your guessometer because it changes constantly, but there's a couple of factors to kind of keep in mind. Number one, how the weather plays out. Once it's winter and everything's colder and windier, your range is gonna suffer. That's normal. Your battery is not dying. <laughs> that is normal that the range changes depending on the weather. The other thing is what you've been doing. So if you went on a long road trip and you just got back home and you plug it in, now it's 100% and it's not giving you the same range as you had before, that's because the car is reading that you normally drive a long range now or you normally drive you know, 80 miles per hour. So it's changing, it's adjusting depending on how you've been driving. So that's normal as well. My advice is to just kind of drive it like you normally do, like in the city, your little you know stops here and there, and eventually over time, the range is gonna change as well. So don't panic if you're charging at like 80%, 100%, and your range isn't getting the full amount that you're used to. It's mainly because either A, the weather, or B, you've been driving kind of crazy or on long road trips, and it's just making the adjustment itself. So don't panic, your battery is fine, and it will kind of change by itself so just kind of do your normal thing and over time it's going to go back to normal all right i'm not sure if this is worldwide or not but i live in america and the blue link app if you are a blue link customer um, you can now look for chargers within the app and you can send directions to the car itself and this app will tell you the address the phone number and what type of charger it is um, so now everything is within the Hyundai Blue Link app and I think that's really cool that you can send it to your car. Okay, that's pretty cool, but what if your friend sends you like an address, for example, Briggs Restaurants? How do I send this to my car? You can always click the share button, and this is Apple Maps by the way, and then you can click on my Hyundai, and then it will send it to your car. And the car will receive it, and you can set the destination from there. So any places using Apple Maps and Google Maps, you can actually send directly to your car. And this is a tip for all people that are gonna do road trips. I highly, highly recommend, especially if you've updated your car, to use the onboard navigation to look for chargers. Not only do they now tell you, if you click on the little information screen, they tell you what's available and what's not available on certain, um, on certain chargers, but 
I feel like it's more updated than a better route planner or charge point from my experience recently. I've gone on two different road trips and the onboard navigation saved my butt twice. So I highly recommend using the onboard navigation first. And then also if you want to double check, use a, bad, a better route planner or use the charge point app. Those apps are great, but again, I highly recommend using the onboard navigation first. All right, last but not least, my last tip for you is if you are in the car charging like I am now, whether it's level one, level two, or fast charging, and you want to have the AC on or charge your phone or anything like that, do not click on this once. Because if you do, you'll go on to accessory mode and it's going to give you like a little warning sign that you're using up the 12 volt battery. So make sure you don't do that. Instead, what you want to do is go ahead and place your foot on the brake, turn it on as if you're going to start driving. It's going to turn everything on as if it's going to start driving, but you obviously can't drive because it's plugged in. But now you can actually use the car's electronics. You can plug in your phone, you can turn on the AC, turn on the heater, turn on the radio, all that good stuff um, without affecting the 12 volt battery. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or if you have any recommendations on what you want to watch next, please leave in the comment section below. Please like this video and I'll catch you guys next time. Please enjoy your Ionic 5, drive safe, have a happy new year, and I'll catch you guys actually tomorrow because I'm going to upload another video tomorrow, but I'll catch you guys later. Bye. <laughs> Peace.